Hello, so yeah, my name is Wayne Witzel. I'm having some technical difficulties with the computer, but uh, I'll get my slides up in a second. They're really unimportant for all of this anyway. So uh, I'm going to be talking about the Allure, Apache Allure project. Uh, does anyone already know what that is? Great, fantastic. So um, what I'm going to be talking about specifically is just giving you an idea of what our goal is within uh, Apache and trying to uh, kind of go over some of the things that we feel is a good use for Allura and how you could use it with your project or within your company or, or things like that. So um, Allura was originally started uh, as an open source project about four years ago through SourceForge. Um, it was uh, developed uh, in Python and it is currently used by a number of different organizations. So the, one second, I think I might have my my slides here, which will help me. Yes. Good. Uh, I'll move it. Oh, well, this is a little bit of a weird thing here, so one second. Um, so let me just I highlight it here. Great. Slides and hey, that's the that's that view. You guys can look at that. One second here. Nope. Nope. Ah, almost. Almost there. I promise. Oh no. What screen is that? Two. No. You'll give it a, yes, look at that. Okay, so um, we can skip, that's me. That's, uh, I'm a, oh yeah, I guess I'll say that. I, I used to work for SourceForge, I currently work for Canonical. Um, I'm a Lura PMC member, and uh, I'm still interested in the project, even though I don't work there anymore. So, onto this. So, what is Allura? Um, it is, uh, we covered that. Sorry, I'm catching up with myself here. Okay, great. So the purpose of Allura was designed to provide a structure around open communities for developing software. So we wanted to build a set of tools that encouraged people to collaborate, communicate, and provide an inclusive set of, um, like an inclusive development environment for, for projects. So everything about Allura is open. Uh, it, the tools, the, 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 the code, the approach, and the philosophy behind it is all about open development and encouraging people to interact with each other and lowering the barrier to entry of a project. So um, this is the, what I was mentioning. We use Allura to develop Allura. Um, if you can go to forgeallura.apache.org and you can see the actual instance that's running there. Um, and can, I believe you can create an account and log in and, and actually view the, view the Allura project right there. Um, there's some other companies. There's a German Aerospace Center and Vehicle Forge, and, and uh, there's some more companies that use it. Some of them don't have a great name, per se. So it's, I left them off the slide anyway. SourceForge uses it still, but they're full of ads and they do bad things. So anyway, um, so, Really, the, the whole idea behind my talk is to kind of say, like, why would you want to use Allura over, say, whatever you're using now, Jira, SVN, uh, GitHub, Bitbucket, like, what, what is, what is the, really the benefit of Allura? And so for that, I would say you can self-host, um, which, which for a lot of organizations is kind of a requirement. Um, if you've ever worked with insurance or medical or anything like that, self-hosting is kind of a big deal due to state and federal regulations and how, they, how you have to control things. Um, another big benefit of Allura is that you, um, you're actively using a project that is part of Apache, like it's part of the ASF. So you're using uh, uh, an Apache project, which helps you know, all of the other Apache projects because by using it and giving us feedback on it, we will be able to better craft the tools in such a way that you, your development workflow will be, you know, 
something that is pleasant to you. So uh, another big uh, benefit to using Allura is, is mainly the extensibility. And what I mean by that is that if you have things within your organization or within your project where you have a very specific need, we provide an extensible tool plug-in system where you can build a custom tool and plug it right in, and then it just works for your project and now other projects within, uh, you know, it, for this example, within like Apache, like any other Apache project who might have wanted to use that tool. And one of the examples that was commonly brought up was uh, a Jira, like a lot of projects use Jira. It would be pretty trivial to make a Jira importer. We don't have one yet, but something like that. So the extensibility is a big reason because you can continue to grow as your workflow changes for your project. Customization is nice just because you can you know, make it look how you want and do the things you want. Um, and then we also, uh, we have a, a, a feature that I think is kind of unique in some ways, which is we refer to them as neighborhoods. And a good way to think about a neighborhood would be um, you have full, like top level Apache projects, and then you have incubating projects. Those would exist in separate neighborhoods. Uh, and it makes it really easy to divide things up into divisions of, or, for example, like at Canonical, we have hardware team, OS team, cloud team. Neighborhoods would be a very good practical application for dividing those units out, but allowing them to stay engaged with each other and communicate with each other across the wikis or the tool sets and what have you. And a lot of other, I would say a lot of other software, um, I hesitate to use the word forges because there's not many full-fledged forges out there yet. I think GitHub and Bitbucket are growing that tool set, but they're, they're still, in my opinion, lacking behind on a lot of tool integration features. So, but neighborhoods are a great way to, to divide that. And so that's, a, that's, another, um, that's another thing that is great about Alert. And, they, and then also we, we support many, um, many different uh, source, like, if, you, if you're doing, you know, obviously all of us are probably doing some form of, you know, revision control, source control, so that we don't box you in. You don't have to use Git. You don't have to use SVN. You, don't, you, know, you can migrate if you want. It's, it's, it's all there. So there's an advantage there, especially with some of the older projects and legacy projects who might be interested in trying out Allura, where you won't have to migrate to Git to use Allura. You won't have to. Like, that's a, that's a barrier to a lot of people. And so... The benefit is that if you want to try it, get your code in there, play around with it, you don't have to necessarily migrate a whole code base or teach all your developers how to use Git or Mercurial now when they're so used to the, AS, to the SVN workflow. So that, I think that's a big benefit. Um, and to touch a little more on the neighborhoods, just by default, you, know, you get a project and user neighborhood in Allura when you just install it. You can see that on forge-allura.apache.org where it allows you to have a user projects neighborhood just, is just where all the projects would exist. Um, user neighborhoods are uh, what I would, I classify them as kind of like when you go to GitHub and you're looking at, at GitHub, it's more of a social focus. It's more on the users and the projects they contribute to. User neighborhoods in Allura, I would say, are like that. They're more about the social part of coding uh, because they contain all of the users that exist uh, within the Allura instance. And so it, it kind of gives you those social tools that allow you to interact with other developers and, and do the things that we're starting to get used to with GitHub or, or Bitbucket or some of the other um, more popular software repo hosting sites, I would say. So, um, any questions about any of that so far? Anything? Okay, okay good. So, so a one, I guess one of the things I really wanted to go over is just kind of the overall Allura workflow, just to give you guys a sample of how Allura kind of functions and what it looks like at a high level. Um, Dave Ronsema, who's here, he's going to be giving a talk right after mine that kind of dives into the details of Allura and kind of goes through each of the tools and, and how you would configure them and different, different ways you could use those tools in your organization. 
where I'm going to stay up top and just kind of say that tools exist. Um, so the first thing you do is you create a project. And you can see these, this is a, a, a good listing of our default tool set that we have. So um, you can see there's multiple code repository tools. There's tickets. There's a blog tool, stats. Um, you know, there, uh, miscellaneous tools that are contributed, uh, open source or contributed from the outside. Like the URL shortener is, a, is an example of a, a tool that someone, I think we had a use for it, and we just created it, and we, you know, it was open sourced as a separate tool, and, and then is just part of the actual um, Allura release now. So it is, it is not uncommon for tools to start out as a separate piece of software and then make their way into the actual full Allura distribution. It just depends on how much people want them and their availability. So th this, is, this is what you would see when you're creating a project. And I believe if you go to Forge Allura, you can actually get this page by manually going to the URL, right? Uh, yeah, so if you want to create a project on there, we can make that happen. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll tweet out a URL that I probably shouldn't, and people can go there. Um, yeah, you, so um, Rich asked what credentials you would need to create a project. And right now, you would just have to create an account. Uh, and on the actual Forge Allura site, there's just a register. And you would register, create an account. And then if you, I, I, if this is not locked down, it's just hidden. So, but we can give this URL out to people who are interested in creating uh, a, a test project for themselves. Because um, I've created test projects. And, they, they, and I don't really have any special access on the Forge Allura. So um, this is more on the, on the tools. So one interesting thing about our tools is they support Markdown. So if there's, an in, if there's a text entry box on the page, it supports Markdown pretty much across the board, which is great for consistency. So if you're making a wiki entry, if you're responding to a ticket, if you're responding to a discussion forum, if you're updating a blog post from the blog tool, it all supports Markdown. It's, it's standard across all the tool sets. As people make new tools, I, I could say that it's pretty much, if you're making a tool and it's going to have input from the user and it's not in Markdown, we'll probably tell you to go make it in Markdown. So it's, it's going to be a consistent theme across the project, which is really nice. User and group level permissions. Uh, the permission system is very highly configurable. I believe Dave's going to cover a lot of that in his talk. It, it is very fine-grained control up to, you know, this user can read from this tool and no others. It's very, so it works, in an, it, it scales to that type of permission set that is usually required a lot in enterprises. So um, the cross-tool artifacts, which I'll talk about more in a little bit. I think I touched on that, but I will talk about them more in a little bit. And then this, the last one there, which to me is kind of a big deal. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but to me, I, I think it really is. And, and the fact that our tool set, whether it's a discussion forum post, a ticket entry, you can, use the, you can log into Allura and you can reply to it through the web form, or you can reply to it via email. And the nice thing about that is it allows users the, the experience they're used to. They want to work in a discussion forum setting they like that threaded discussion setting. But for a developer, we don't want to have to go log in to the discussion forum to reply to a user. So one of the things that's really nice is you can take that user's forum, you can map it to either a mailing list or, or just a, a, a mail all type email address, and then you'll get the updates for that, and then you can reply via email. And because of our artifact system and our, our processing system, we'll, we can easily put that message right back into the thread of the discussion. So it allows users and developers to communicate, in my opinion, in a much easier way for the user. There's lower barrier to entry for a user to send the developer a message because they're not having to subscribe to the mailing list and then confirm their account and then do this and then type an email and then get an email back and they, they're not used to the weird, what should I top quote or bottom quote or inline quote, like they just get to type in a discussion forum like they're used to. And I think that's a huge benefit to using Allura. Um, 
over some of the other tools and over some of just the other like traditional ways that developers are used to communicating because we're we like to like we don't like to break our workflow we like to help users and we like to make sure that they feel like they're getting what they need but at the same time if that means i have to go log into a discussion forum to do it a lot of times i might not do that so <laughs> this makes it really nice for me as a developer to just say oh yeah i saw that user they had a question really easy for me to reply via email because it's showing up on the user's mailing list and that's all configurable through the tool so it's 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 quite convenient um, so this is uh, something I wanted to touch on and I mentioned it in the last slide there the artifact system within Allura is really what I think makes it pretty unique and that any pretty much every action that happens within Allura generates an artifact and that gets a unique ID and that artifact can be used to enable on the second one cross-linking of the tools so just to just to kind of exp expand on that a little more if you go back to working across the neighborhoods if you have your hardware department and your mobile department and your OS department they can have their own individual silos for development which is helpful for things like making sure that they have a good wiki that's not cluttered and, 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 and keeping noise down on mailing lists or, or noise down on the ticket tracker and stuff like that. But then if they need to reference, if the hardware team needs to reference something that the OS team is doing, they can easily do that because of the artifact. So we allow cross-linking across neighborhoods, across tools, and it's very easy to get information into different places and have that available with the context you need so that you can get work done and it's 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 really nice um we use it a, when i was at sourceforge we used it a lot for um, we had our support team and they had their own support ticket queue and then they would create a new um a new dev ticket based on uh, a user bug report and then they would embed that support ticket link into the dev ticket and even though it was in a different completely different ticket queue in a completely different area of the site, it would still show up as a related ticket. I could click it. I could get all the context I needed. When I replied to my dev ticket, because, it, because there was relation, Chris Sai, the guy who was doing our support, he would get notified of that, and then he could easily go update the user issue. And so it just made a really nice, convenient workflow for bridging support into dev and dev out into support without having to have either completely disjointed and separate systems or a lot of noise within one system. And so I think that is, that goes back to like, a, it's a huge benefit to how Allura has approached the, the development workflow. Um, and the other thing is that within the mailing lists, we can configure uh, or we have configured it so that when you receive messages uh, and you use the mailing list stuff, it, it can, it, there's a preprocessor within there that, that processes any artifact type tags and will make sure that the links are generated correctly for when you're applying to discussion forms and ticket, tickets and, all, and, 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 and things of that nature. So that really, uh, that's really nice as well because you don't have to worry about, oh, are they gonna get the right context with all this or is it gonna be linked to the right place? So. Um, and then a good example, this is actually something we recently did. This is an activity stream screenshot. And this is a good example of how it all being an artifact and all artifacts being of the same type but across different tools. Um, you can, well, for this one, it's not so much because you can see it's mostly commits. But if you notice, that top one is a, is a wiki page modification. And this, because we use that artifact system, if you're creating a new tool or you're doing something along those lines, it's very easy for your tool to take advantage of the fact that we have that system in place and make sure that updates would show up on the activity stream by implementing the activity stream protocol. And as long as you have an artifact ID with your tool for every event, it, it'll just show up there for you. And that's, that's really nice. Um, it, it, this is kind of bridging that gap. Uh, I believe this is from Dave's 
uh, user projects, when I talked about the user neighborhoods, this is from Dave's user on uh, Forge Allura. And so that is why I was, that's what I was referencing with the social coding link, where this is more of like what you'd expect to see when you go to a, a GitHub or a Bitbucket, you see that, that activity stream right away for a user. So that's a recent feature for us, but we, we, we saw the demand and want for it and the usefulness of it. And so we're able to do that fairly easy within our system. Um, it's something that I think is a, I think it's kind of an important piece of Allura in the fact that we are able to compartmentalize the tools in such a way that, I, I, an example would be like, uh, I'm attending PyCon after I fly out of here to go to Montreal to attend PyCon, and my plan while I'm there is to actually make a tool, uh, at least attempt to make a tool that will allow you to search projects on Forge Allura. That tool doesn't, doesn't need to depend on any other parts of the system because of the way we've made it pluggable. So I'll be able to, without impacting the rest of the ecosystem, make a tool for searching. And people will be able to just install that tool, use it if they want. If they don't need searching, then they won't have it. But that is more along the lines of if you were deploying it in your own environment at your own company. The Forge Allura site, I believe, is, is going to be kind of the, we hope, the place where Apache projects would host their, their project. So we're, we're trying, anyone who is part of an Apache project who wants to get their code on there or try it out, please get in touch with us and we will we'll work on that to get you set up in there, um, at least trying it out and, and seeing how things go. So I am I'm good on time. So yeah, we have actually uh, uh, yesterday during the, oh, sorry. Rich asked me if I had had any conversations with projects this week about trying out Allura as a development platform. And the answer is yes. Uh, we've spoken to a couple projects who are interested in it. Um, we've had some feedback from people who really hate like Jira and who would be interested in looking at ways to move away from that. So, and we talked to, I can't remember his last name or what project it was. What was? It was a data food project. His name's Will. And I believe he's in, they're incubating. And he, um, he expressed interest in getting on board. And so we're going to be trying to work with them to get them onto Allura. And I, I personally believe that it, is, it could be a, a really great, really, really great thing for Apache projects. Um, especially since uh, I actually, I just came from a talk. And this is kind of a little sidebar. I, I came from a talk, um, not from this, not to here, but from the AM, uh, the linked data talk, where uh, I can't remember the speaker's name, so forgive me, but he was talking about there are a lot of Apache projects that are doing a lot of similar things in the same space, but the collaboration between those projects isn't very high right now. It's, it's, it's they kind of work in their silo, even though they might be working within the same space. I believe that Allura can actually bridge some of that gap because if you have project A and project B and they're both on Forge Allura, they will be able to reference each other's tickets and, and link to each other's things and, and easily link to each other's wiki pages or, you know, and, and, and users will be able to see that that collaboration exists and they'll, I, I think it could grow a higher level of collaboration between similar or like projects within Apache that um, would just benefit everyone. So, and, and that's really why I'm excited about it. And that's why I've decided to stay, you know, active in the Allura, you know, development in the community and in the project. Um, I think officially now we, we, we have less, even though it started at SourceForge, we now only have one committer who's left at SourceForge and the rest of us all work at other places now. So uh, it, it shows that this, this project definitely will, if, if, you, if you end up using it or trying it out and you start to get involved with it, I think you'll really find it quite pleasant and probably end up sticking around. And that's a lead into community, which is what I wanted to talk about next. So we, right now we're, we're, we just graduated last month, I believe about two weeks ago, we graduated to a top level project. Um, thanks to the hard work of all of the 
the incubating people and the, and the committers and everybody on the list helping us out. It was, it was a very interesting experience to go through incubation. And, and I think we were able to learn a lot about the project and a lot about how unvisible it was because it had been developed by a private company. There's a lot of things we just didn't have. We didn't have a contributors list and we didn't have versions and we didn't cut releases and we didn't do these things. And, and so uh, building a community, building the Allura community has been quite interesting. And I, I, I would say that we now have something that resembles a community and we're, we're starting to, to grow it out. And, um, and I think that it, it is going to continue to grow in a positive way. So there's, there's the information right there. Graduated 2014, and you can go to allura.apache.org to check it out. Um, I, I think that we are, as, a, as an Apache project, I, and Rich might be able to correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we're the only forge, right? We're the, we're the, only, we're the only Apache project trying to solve this specific problem of bringing all of these tools together. I mean, there's, there's other Apache projects, you know, Subversion is an Apache project and things like that, that, that focus on, the, on an individual piece of this. But we're the only project that is working to kind of bring all these tools together and create an inclusive, open development workflow for projects. And that is really, if you go to, um, I believe on the allura.apache.org site, we link to the Allura docs. And kind of the philosophy that is listed there is, a, is, and one of the reasons it was created originally four years ago, was to create an open and inclusive environment for developing communities. It, it doesn't even say for pro software projects. It, the, the philosophy is really about developing a community around that project. And I think that really fits well with the kind of the motto and the goals of the SF. Right? We, if you listen to, to the talks and a lot of the mantras, it's, it's not about those projects. It's about building that community around that project. And the projects tend to take care of themselves, and the source code tends to, tends to get committed on its own when there's a good, robust community around it. So that's what we're hoping we can do with Allura, is make it easier for people to grow communities. So, and that comes down to you know, contributing or getting involved in the community. And I, I left it off the list, but I, I should have put it on here. Contributing is also using it for us. You know, if you want to contribute to Allura, you, using Allura is contributing because we can get feedback. We can get in that feedback loop with projects. We can uh, understand the needs and, and what is working and what's not working from a Apache project point of view, but also from a developer point of view. And, and so uh, on a few slides back, I had mentioned that one of the projects that uses Allura is the Allura project. So we've been dogfooding it for, I mean, since it really, since the first viable release was put on SourceForge, we've been using it to develop it. And you can see that in some of the tools where we use the ticket tracker extensively to develop it. So that is very mature. I, I personally believe it's one of the best ticket trackers I've ever used um, because we, changed it, fixed it, and modified it as we used it. And anytime something annoyed us, we were able to fix it. So the benefit that you get of contributing to Allura by using it is you guys know the process of developing software within as an Apache project. You know how to get to the, to the dev list. You know how to get in touch with us. You know where our IRC channel is on hashtag Allura, on Freenode, and all this. So your feedback loop will be very short for getting stuff done and getting things changed in a way you need because we, our goal really is to grow this so that projects want to use it. And if you're one of the first few projects to get on there and start using it, you're going to benefit from the fact that we don't have anyone else to give our attention to. <laughs> so we will be very attentive to your needs as a project and ensuring that you get what you want out of Allura as long as it fits within the philosophy of building those open and inclusive communities around a project. So this is just some information um, for contributing if you're interested in contributing as a developer. Uh, I, don't, I think I mentioned it's all written in Python, um, which is, I think there's 
a couple other Python projects, but there's, there's not many Python projects within um, Apache, so you know, it gives you a chance to hack on some Python if you're interested in doing that, if you've always wanted to check out that as a language. So that's a, that's a good benefit there. And um, so the, that's the, the second link there is a, actually a, a nice little tutorial about building uh, Allura plugins, or building tools for Allura. If you're curious about what that looks like, we also have a, a bite-sized ticket label on Forge Allura, which I believe all the tickets in there are done now. <laughs> but that's where we put kind of the low-hanging fruit of tickets that are easy to work on. Um, and I mentioned before that we will be sprinting on it at, at, in PyCon this year. Um, so if you're interested in checking out Allura, logging in, playing around with it, and then you see something like, oh, if it had this, my project would definitely try it. Now is a great time to get on the users list and, and put that ask out there because we're about to have a whole week to sprint on it. And we can probably prioritize some things above whatever we feel like working on. So this, this is a great time to get in and, and get those asks in if you have a chance to, to look at it or, or check it out. And here's, Here's where you would do that. This, uh, we're on hashtag Allura and Freenode, and then we also have the user's mailing list. And so I, I encourage, if you're at all frustrated in any way with your current development workflow of your project, I encourage you to check out Allura and at least try it. Try it with a little side project or try it with your current project or, or log in and just look around and, and, and kind of kick the tires on it. But I really would encourage everyone to go look at Allura, I, I think it has the potential to be a really great thing for all projects. Um, and let's see, I got another. So, yeah, I'm trying. I left a lot of time. I left about 15 minutes for questions, just because I was hoping there would be quite a few. But if there's not, that's that's okay too. Rich, yeah. Sure. Um, I've attended, hello, oh, I've attended little. several talks this week about um, GitHub at Apache. Mm -hmm. And so my question would be in that context, how does the Allura GitHub integration look like? Is there such a thing? And right, okay. So the, um, everyone hear that okay? I couldn't tell with the mic, but the, the question was how does the Allura GitHub integration look because there's a lot of talk about GitHub at Apache. Um, and we have a, I believe we have, no, we have an importer for Google Code. Do we have an importer for GitHub as well? Yeah, so um, we have an importer for GitHub that allows you to import a project from there. What we don't have is a, is a easy way to um, sync code, for example. So if you if you wanted to host your, your, your source repo on GitHub, but you wanted to use all of the wonderful tools of Allura to actually develop your project, we, we, we currently don't have a tool for syncing the code. You would have to manually sync the code. But one of the things we've talked about definitely is getting webhooks in place, which are great for continuous integration as well as things like pushing updates from other places when, when code updates happen. So I think, the work, my, I think the workflow would look like, okay, we have our repo on GitHub because that's where the, a lot of people are. And then we have all of our tools in Allura because the tools are better. And, and really, they, the, the, the tickets, I mean, I'm biased, but the tickets in GitHub are kind of lacking, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> they're not very robust, they're just kind of very simple. But, um, you know, so being able to use both at the same time, I think, is a benefit. Um, and our hope is that eventually Apache projects would prefer to use Allura for the whole thing. Sure. Absolutely, yeah. 
Yeah, and uh, Dave and I, believe, we had a discussion about this a couple days ago. And, and if you guys didn't hear, Rich was saying, it'd be nice to, in, to accept pull requests from anywhere, not just within one vendor's site. And, and Dave and I talked about this, and I, it's been a discussion with Allure for a while that, yeah, you should be able to easily ex have a pull request accepted from whether it's a Git repo on private hosting, a Git repo on GitHub, or someone's road code install, or Bitbucket, or whatever you have, you should be able to easily bring that change into your repo on Allura. And that is a area that we are continually working on and improving. Um, we just recently um, uh, released some updates for the whole uh, fork and merge and pull request system within Allura itself, so that it handles that a little better internally. But that is an area we know we need to work on. But I think a large, a large part of it is also that we haven't quite got to the point where, and this goes back to dog fooding your product, we haven't been using the merge fork, like fork merge pull request workflow ourselves when we develop. We've just been creating local branches and then merging and then pushing up master. So that area, you can tell that area is not very well groomed and it's not, hasn't had a lot of attention paid to it which is why we really encourage other projects to get on there and start using it because if, if they're willing to deal with some of the pain points initially, we can respond to those pretty quick and actually get a good system in place that works really well for whatever workflow we end up having between GitHub, Apache projects, and Allura. Any other questions? All right, well, thanks. Great, thank you.